Honestly, this doesn't taste good, but I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> Welcome to the video, yo. That's very accurate. Good morning. If you guys are returning subscribers, I'm not really sure if you're gonna be interested in this video because we're talking all about my job, what I do at work and that kind of stuff. But if you are new and you clicked on this video because you're interested in the career, hello. My name is Kiana. I am an actuarial analyst. I work in Canada at a life insurance company and I'm just gonna walk you guys through my work day. There aren't that many actuarial videos on YouTube and which is why I find it important to like make videos like this because I literally search the internet for videos like this. You can find tons of videos on marketing, healthcare, people, lawyers, all that stuff, but you cannot find anything about actuaries, which makes sense because, you know, it's just not as, maybe it's not as big of a field. I don't know, don't quote me on that, but I assume. So yeah, anyways, that's what we're doing today. If you guys have seen any of my actuarial videos before, you know, when I was an intern, I used to make tons of videos like this and now I'm full-time. So I started my full-time job in September. It is April when I'm filming this, so I I've been here for about eight months so I have eight months of experience as a full-time employee to share with you guys hopefully answer some questions that you guys sent to me and if you guys have other questions feel free to leave them below because I will be filming more of these just not as frequently as they did in the past and I'll just chunk all the questions in future videos or even just answer them on spot below it's about 10 minutes to 9 I'm about to start the work day so I guess this would be a good time to tell you guys what do I do for work so I would say about 80 to 90 percent of my time I spend working on the i417 team i joined this team in february so i started my job in september i was working on a different team which i'm gonna tell you about i still work on that team but now i spend majority of my time working for the i417 team i417 is basically a new accounting standard which is basically like a law um it's just how you do the accounting for like insurance policies and contracts and stuff like that and i think the purpose of it actually let me google because i don't want to tell you guys foolishness the purpose of it is to improve comparability and increase transparency and to provide users of accounts with the information they need to make better decisions and stuff like that. So that's what I do for most of my day. But the team that I originally joined when I started the company is called Actuarial Best Practices. It's not a super technical actuarial role. I literally just gather data from different actuaries so different departments so for example group insurance individual insurance like different types of insurance products i gather information for specific reports and then i send it off to corporate who manages the company's like big accounting sheets so like your income sheets or income statements and stuff like that you know balance sheets all that stuff in terms of what kind of software i use on a daily basis i use ggy access i use excel exploit excel use excel to the point where i hate excel and you know there are other little sprinkles of software that we'll use like you know sap uh those are the ones i use on a daily basis so those are the ones i remember so yeah now it's nine o'clock I'm gonna sign on for work, but I'm already signed on. And I'm gonna start my work day. I obviously start with emails because in the past, it's funny, I don't usually get that many emails, but you know, now that I'm important, <laughs> I'm joking. But now that I'm more involved in different projects, I get copied on emails a lot. So nobody's emailing me, I'm being copied on emails which is nice because I always wanted emails and to be invited to meetings. Is that like, <laughs> whatever, my boss ever sees this? Yeah, you know. I'm sure you know, you know the vibes, you know the vibes. I don't usually eat breakfast. Sometimes I'll eat fruits like this morning. I had a banana and I was gonna have blueberries, but the blueberries were going bad. So story of my life. So yeah, I just took a lunch break and I'm not really gonna take my full lunch break right now just cause this morning has been really hectic. It was busier than I thought today was going to be. Most of what I've been doing today, yesterday, I guess this week is a lot of debugging cause we've been doing testing on some, some data and basically, we're trying to make sure the data is being transferred over properly, but 
you know, there are issues because some data is being transferred, some isn't. So we've just been doing a lot of trying to find out why isn't certain things or why aren't certain things being sent over easily. Um, it's interesting because a lot of the times the work you have to do at the core, it's a very simple issue. But when you have to do the work, sometimes it can feel very complicated and if you watch my youtube channel you know something i talk about a lot is feeling like i'm not good enough for my job because sometimes things just feel hard in that i feel like i should know how to do it or know how to do it faster and sometimes i just don't and this is something i've just been you know teaching myself over time that you're not going to know everything and you just need to ask questions because what you don't want to do is slow everyone's progress because you're afraid to ask questions and this leads me into a question one of you guys asked it's not really about what i was talking about but it's just a new question let me bring you guys closer oh my camera is dying okay so somebody asked me when should you start taking exams once you've started the job and this is a good question because i'm about to write my third exam so ifm which is the first exam technically that i'm writing since starting the job i say technically because i took exam p last fall i wrote it in november but i paid for that because i paid for it to write it in september i failed in september retook it for november passed in november but the company didn't pay for that so this is my first official exam that the company is paying for and all that stuff and granted if i hadn't already been taking p i would have taken ifm sooner because how my company is structured you have to take an exam every six months like so between january and june you should be taking an in an exam between July and December, you should be writing an exam. So yeah, I'm actually writing in July, but you know, it's very close to June because it's the first week of July. So yeah, I just want to kind of talk about exams in general. One of the reasons I actually stopped making AXI videos on this channel, there were two reasons. One, I felt like my life was just being too actuary-like. Like it was, I worked as an actuarial analyst or an intern, and then I was making videos about that. I just didn't like it. It was a lot to be making only, you know? And then the second thing was exam stress because a very popular video of mine was about how I'm gonna pass exam P in eight weeks. And I still stand by what the content in the video. You know, if I followed the structure, I probably would have passed, but I didn't. I just started slacking and that's why I failed because I just stopped studying. And that happens a lot, way more often than people think. You know, people just lose motivation. They go weeks without studying, then they try to rush and pass in two weeks and it doesn't always work. Exams in general can just be a very anxious driven process. They're not easy, it's long. And you have to study for months and it's very time consuming especially if you work or you're going to school it can be a lot so yeah i thought i would just mention that because one of the things is that if i start making actual videos again i don't really want to talk about the exam process that much but that's such a big part of becoming an actuary you know you're several exams that take up like two hours each day at least of study time especially in the beginning and then closer to the actual exam you're studying for like hours and end can be a lot but anyways to answer the question when should you start taking exams once you start the job i would just say as soon as possible you know like why not give yourself breaks in between because you need time to recoup and you your company usually will have a kind of structure you have to follow anyways like mine i took my last exam in november so i knew even if i want to take a month long break two month break three month break i know i need to find an exam in this time period and put it down on my list so yeah naturally just start taking them because you're gonna have to do them at some point and you get a raise usually or a bonus every time you pass an exam so if that isn't motivation enough you know
came out my final meeting of the day and technically I would be done work right now, but I'm gonna be working late today and I thought I'd use this as an opportunity while I wait on Excel to load because it's been taking a while. I thought I'd just talk to you guys about work-life balance because that was the final question that someone asked that I wanted to answer today. So it was just asking, how do you find work-life balance with such a demanding career? And the interesting thing about it is not only is it demanding in that you have to sometimes study after work for your exams, but a lot of the times, especially in busy seasons, you probably will be working late. It doesn't happen often. I was having like a string of days where I was working late in the past couple of weeks, but that wasn't really about projects. It was more that I was new. So I was working late because I needed the time to learn things on my own time. Cause sometimes I can be a slow learner depending on what it is. Cause everything was just so new, but yeah, work-life balance. You have to just be really organized, listen. And you have to also be strict. Sometimes when I would work late, it was because I wasn't really as productive as I could be during the day. So I'd be trying to make up time in the evening. And I really, once I realized, especially when summer came around that I just want to be off work at five, I'm super productive in the day and I'm just strict about it. Like if I don't finish something, it's not because I'm not smart enough. It's just because I don't know enough. And maybe tomorrow I need to go ask questions, which is what I do. And it makes everything easier. For a lot of people, they're afraid to ask questions because they kind of are afraid of their bosses and stuff like that and you need to shift that mindset because your boss is just another person kind of like you are there's nothing to be scared about unless they're actually you know mean people but imagine yourself one day you're gonna be a, a leader or a senior to someone else should they be afraid to ask you a question no so that's how i look on it and that just made life or just makes life a lot easier because i've always thought about it that way but you know you can obviously still have those internal feelings of like oh my god like i should know this like do they think i'm dumb but at the end of the day it doesn't matter you need to get your work done and yeah so work-life balance i know i kind of like went off topic i just try to be very organized with what plans i have i don't really make social plans in the week mostly because I just don't have that many friends in the city I live in. So I go out only, mostly on the weekends. But in general, that would just work best for me because with the studying coming back and I just also do stuff on the side, like I do YouTube and I do client stuff, like I have a part-time job. I don't really have time to do things in the week and the time that I do have, I usually just like to take it to chill. So yeah, have strict deadlines on when you want to stop working, cut off times like now, because I went for a walk, I know I'm gonna have to work a bit more. Plus it's also again, busy time. So I do have to finish up some stuff, but on a regular day, I wouldn't even really stop and take a walk. I'm just trying to power through the day and leave. So I hope that's a good enough answer. Let's go through the final stretch of work for the day. Finish, it's 5.30 right now. Hopefully we can be done by about like 6.30 and then I have to study. <laughs> finally done work for the day it's 6 45 i didn't even really get to finish everything i needed to do but excel keeps freezing on me and my patience is like it's it's this it's smaller than this it's like here it's li anyways so yeah i got the bulk of what i needed done so i'm just gonna sign on early in the morning and just do the last part it should be like 10 minutes so it's all gooch i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you liked it let me know let me know if you want to see more let me know if you have questions let me know if there are any specific topics you want me to focus on or talk about like i did in this video if you guys liked it give me a thumbs up subscribe so that i know and i'll make more in the future and yeah we're back to making these career videos because i feel like i tried to remove them from my life so much because I didn't really want my channel to be super career focused but it is such a big part of my life and I don't really like talking about work in my regular vlogs because I don't know it's just you know I'd rather make specific videos about the work stuff especially because I know not everyone really cares but some people really do care anyways thank you guys for watching don't stop here go check out some of my other videos because I'm obviously so cool and yeah I'll see you guys in the next video